In December, I talked about small fiber neuropathy and did a general overview of the condition, but after that video, I got a lot of requests to go deeper into a few of the new and emerging therapies that are on the horizon. So that's what we're doing here today. Let's go. Action. All right, so we're gonna dive right in here. And the first on this list are nerve growth factor inhibitors. And these are proteins that are involved in the normal growth and survival of nerve cells. In humans, serum NGF levels start to decrease at approximately eight years of age most likely due to an increasing maturity of the nervous system. And it has a pretty well-known role in pain processing, although the precise mechanisms of action are not completely understood. Now, additionally, most of the available data comes from animal studies, but the available data does establish a role for nerve growth factor in how the body communicates pain. Our bodies communicate pain through such effects as the release of inflammatory mediators, including glycoproteins, cytokines, prostaglandins, nitric oxide, and nociceptive gene expression, as well as local nerve sprouting or new nerve growth. And a side note. Listen. Listen. Nociception simply refers to the nervous system's processing of painful or harmful stimuli. <laughs> and it deals with a series of events that our brains require for us to receive pain signals, convert it to a chemical signal that our brains recognize and understand, and then that translates to a signal that our brains recognize and triggers an appropriate defensive response. Any viewers remember Schoolhouse Rock? telegraph line I want to sing it right now but I'm not going to but I want to all right so huge schoolhouse rock fan huge groupie Saturday morning cartoons I god I miss them I miss Saturday morning cartoons when life was simple right anyway they were the best and a fun fact schoolhouse rock is how I learned to uh, sing the preamble some way past history in my, I want to say my senior year of high school. Stay tuned at the end for a um, little surprise. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to do this. Now, in some cases of small fiber neuropathy, there is an overexpression of nerve growth factor, which can lead to nerve damage. So NGF inhibitors such as Tanzimab were being studied as a potential treatment here. Both Pfizer and Eli Lilly had this drug in their pipelines a couple of years ago, and I believe we're co-producing it. Clinical trials did show promise for chronic pain conditions, but ultimately the FDA did not approve it due to concerns of increased joint damage in osteoarthritis and other potential issues that outweighed the potential benefits. Ultimately, the takeaway here though, is that NGF has been identified as a potentially beneficial method of alleviating chronic pain associated with many conditions, small fiber being one of them. Next are immunomodulators. So SFN, as we know, can be caused by autoimmune disorders in which the body attacks itself, basically. It destroys its own tissues. So immunomodulators such as intravenous immunoglobulin or IVIG and rituximab are used as current options for small fiber treatment. So I'd be leaving something on the table Can't do that. if I failed to mention both of them because while they're not necessarily new, IVIG especially treats SFN and is, it's fairly recent and gaining ground when it comes to SFN treatment but it's definitely showing benefit. Now, insurance companies will fight to the nail to deny authorizations for its use in small fiber treatment, but the growing body of evidence in its favor is making it tougher for them to do that. And I cover in detail in this video here. Now, Rituxin has been around since 1997 and was initially used to treat non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, but 
has since greatly expanded its scope into peripheral neuropathy associated with dysautonomia, which basically causes symptoms like abnormally fast or slow heart rate, anxiety, excessive sweating, or not being able to sweat at all, fatigue, feeling short of breath, especially when you exercise. So while it's been around and it is used in those situations, rituximab definitely has its place in the treatment of peripheral neuropathy. Onward, how to describe stem cells. Stem cells are cool. If white blood cells are the T-birds of the body, then stem cells are the Sandies or the new kids on the block that have the ability to adapt to whatever friend group they're trying to penetrate. So they have the potential to differentiate into various cell types, including nerve cells. And before we jump off into why stem cells are so incredibly helpful and beneficial, it's really important to understand neurotrophic factor. So neurotrophic factors are growth factors known to promote nerve development and survival, much like nerve growth factor we talked about in the beginning because nerve growth factor is a neurotrophic factor. They also maintain functional integrity, promote regeneration, aid in the repairing of damaged nerves, regulate neuronal plasticity, which is the ability for neural networks in the brain to change, causing the brain to rewire itself to function in some way that differs from how it previously functioned. Basically, neurotrophic factors are critical in providing a protective environment for our cells to function and regenerate. And they're secreted by the various populations of stem cells discovered in the human body. So we can make the jump that infusing them via transplant can generate more of these protective factors and help the body heal and regenerate damaged nerves. Gene therapy is next. So gene therapy involves the delivery of genetic material to cells in order to treat or prevent disease. And in recent years, gene therapy has gained a lot of ground in the news uh, because it can venture on kind of uh, Frankensteinish with, with CRISPR and I'm not gonna get into all of that. But gene therapy has proven to be an increasingly alluring possibility for treating small fiber neuropathy. And in an online article published in May of 2022 by Molecular Therapy, it discussed study results where researchers injected a virus carrying a pair of trans genes that encode for gamma-aminobutyric acid, or GABA, which many of you have asked me about. They injected this into mice with sciatic nerve injuries and neuropathic pain. I did not know that mice can have sciatic nerve injuries. I mean, obviously they can, they have parts just like we do, but how do you determine a mouse has a sciatic nerve injury? And GABA, by the way, is a neurotransmitter that blocks impulses between nerve cells, in this case, pain signals. So in this article, I quote, the production of GABA by the transgenes resulted in measurable inhibition of pain signaling in the mice, which persisted for at least two and a half months after treatment. So again, promising. Dixotrogene is next and is made by Biogen. And it's a drug that blocks pathways connecting pain sensitive neurons that respond to tissue damage. So patients with small fiber neuropathy who received a twice daily 200 milligram dose in clinical trials had a significantly lower score than those taking a placebo 12 weeks after beginning treatment. Another similar drug made by Vertex Pharmaceuticals has been also given the go ahead to advance its non-opioid painkiller into phase three clinical trials, which I believe began in the end, I wanna say in the end of 2022. And finally, neuromodulation is last on our list. And neuromodulation involves the use of electrical or magnetic stimulation to alter nerve activity. Transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation or TENS 
and spinal cord stimulation, or SCS, are being studied in a greater capacity for small fiber neuropathy. So there are different levels of TENS units. Some can be purchased on Amazon and others you need to see an experienced physiotherapist who has access to maybe stronger units for advanced cases of small fiber. Many commented after my Healing Neuropathy 2023 video saying that they rely heavily on their personal TENS units for day-to-day -day pain control. I have one as well, which I'll put in the description below. And I go over both TENS and neuromodulation here and here. Check those videos out because there are a few things that you need to know in depth about beforehand. So if you're entertaining this, definitely, you know, I, I want you to be knowledgeable in what you're purchasing because there's definitely a couple of concerns to be aware of before you try them. So I'll see you there. Come on, this way. All right, here goes nothing. We the people in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of a liberty to ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. And then it goes on, but I'm not going to sing the whole thing. I could, I could, and I can't believe I just did that. But anybody who knows Schoolhouse Rock out there, I know right now, you're probably pulling it up on YouTube. How does she know? I probably jog something in your brain. Look up Telegraph too. It'll kind of give you an idea of what we talked about today. Lucid Med, out.